Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at the definition of a subset of a set. Okay, so we say a set A is a subset of set B if every element of A is also an element of B. So for example, if set A consists of the elements 1 and 2, and set B consists of the elements 0, 1, 2, and 3, we would say that A is a subset of set B because I can find both elements of set A within set B. Now the interesting thing about something being a subset, set A is a set. It's also a subset of another set. So it's a little bit weird how we just keep using that, the, the root or the word set to define this, but that's what a subset is. The notation we would use is we would read this as A is a subset of B. A is a subset of B. And the way that I tend to remember the, the notation for subset is this almost looks like the less than or equal to. So it's like, you know, there has to be less, fewer elements in set A or the same number of elements in set A as there are in set B. So it's kind of how I remember it in like a weird sort of way. Maybe that'll work for you. Maybe it won't. Additional notation, if we put a slash through it, that slash is a negation symbol, and that would just mean that A is not a subset of B. So that means that there's some element in set A that is not an element of set B. Every set is a subset of the universe. Okay, so looking at how we would represent subsets in a Venn diagram. Now, I, as I just said, every, sub, uh, every set is a subset of the universe, and that's why the universe is always enclosed everything is enclosed by the universe, right? So we put the rectangle around everything because everything is held within the universe. If set A is the subset of set B, we would make sure that that set A is fully enclosed in set B. So previously I had said that set A contained one and two. So we would put one and two here, and then we would put zero and three in set B, but not in set A. So in this case, A is the subset of set B. Okay, let's look at an example of creating a Venn diagram. So the universe here, I tried to think of all the New York based teams for the four major sports. I apologize if I forgot any. So we have our universe is those, the, the teams from the, the four major sports. Then we have N and we have B. So if we want to create our universe, and if we look at this carefully, it should be that B is a subset of N, right? So Mets and Yankees are present Mets and Yankees, yep. So we have our universe, we would set up our set N, and then we would set up our set B, and B we're going to put in, let's see if I can do this, M and Y for Mets and Yankees, and then completing set N, we would need a G for Giants, Islanders, Jets, Knicks, Nets, so it worked out, and Rangers, they all have different starting letters, yay! And then there's nothing in the universe, I didn't put anything else in there right? Oh yeah, I did. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. Who'd we forget? The Devils. The Devils would go out here. Giants, we have Islanders, we have Jets. Nah, nah, nah. Red Bulls. So I can't use R or B, um, but I can use E, I guess. So I'll use E to represent Red Bulls. I might want to define that over here. I'm just going to say E equals Red Bulls. And so this would be our Venn diagram, where set B, which I'm going to circle because I don't want it to get lost, set B B is completely contained within set N. Okay, so now we want to decide, is the set on the left a subset of the set on the right? So we're going to use the notations either is a, set, uh, is a subset of or is not a subset of. Okay, so here's the first set here. We have three, four, five, and six. Do we see all four of those elements in this set here? We don't because I don't see the three. Therefore, this set is not a subset of this set, right? Because for in order for it to be a subset, I would need to see the three over here and I don't, so it's not a subset. Using the fancy notation, so Z represents the set of integers, is the set of integers a subset of the set of rational numbers? And the answer is yes, every integer is a rational number, so it is a subset. How about 4, 8, 12, 16? Is that a subset of 2, 4, 6, blah, 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 18, 20? Now, I can't physically match up. I can match up the 4, but I can't match up the 8, 12, or 16 because they're not present. But this dot, dot, dot leads us to the assumption that this pattern continues. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 
14, 16, 18, in which case, yes, it is a subset. We would be able to if we expanded it, so we say it is a subset. And then lastly is 1, 2, 3, 4, a subset of the set containing the elements 1, 2, 3, 4. The answer is yes, it is, right? Because the definition of a subset is that I can take the 1 and find it in the, set, the other set. I can take the 2 and find it in the other set, take the 3, find it in the other set, take the 4, and find it in the other set. Now you might be saying, but wait, there's nothing else in that set, and that's true. So what we would say is that these sets are equal to each other. So when the sets are identical, when they have the exact same elements, and one of them doesn't contain anything that's not in the other one, then we would say those sets are equal to each other. So we would say that A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. If that's true, then the sets are equal to each other. So if set R is A, B, C, D, and set B is A, C, B, D, we would say that R is equal to set B, that these are equal. So you know, in, in arithmetic, you might think that like equal and equivalent could mean the same thing. You might be wrong, but you might make that assumption, and that's a fair assumption because it's very hard to distinguish in arithmetic when they're not the same. But here in set theory, equal and equivalent are not the same thing. So for us to say that two sets are equal, that means that they must contain the exact same elements. Okay, so we talked about just a regular subset, but we also have the idea of a proper subset. A proper subset of another set, so set A is a proper subset of set B, if A is a subset of B and there is an element in B that's not in A. So that means that sets that are equal are not proper subsets of each other because we need B to have something that A doesn't have. The notation, whoops, sorry, the notation for proper subset is we just use this, we don't put the line underneath. So remember how I related that, that line and that symbol to like the less than or equal to? It's like taking away the or equal to and just having the less than. So that we would just use that, just that like C looking thing. So for example, if set A is 1 and 2 and set B contains the elements 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then A is a proper subset of B. It's also a regular subset of B, so it would also be correct to say A is a subset of B. But what distinguishes it is that I can find an element in B, like I can take the 0, and I don't see it in A. That's what makes A a proper subset of B because it's a subset and there's also something in set B that's not in set A. Okay, so we're gonna decide whether the set on the left is a proper subset, a regular subset, or both. So the first one, we have the set containing two, four, and six. That would be a subset, not a proper subset, right? Because there's nothing here that's not here. So it's not a proper subset, it's just a regular subset. How about the set containing June and July? How does that compare to the set containing all 12 months? Well, I can find June, I can find July, so we know that it's a subset. But we also know that it's a proper subset because I see something here that I don't see in the first set. I see January or February, March, etc., etc. And the last one, we have the empty set. And is the empty set a subset of the set containing 1, 2, 99, and 100? It is, it is a subset because there is something, anything that's in here, which is nothing, I can find here, right? I mean, there's nothing there, so there's nothing to find. And it's a proper subset because I see something here that's not in the empty set. So it's a subset and it's a proper subset. A little bit more about that null set. The null set is a subset and a proper one of every non-empty set, so the only set that the null set is not a, sub, a proper subset of would be the null set itself. That's getting a little bit trippy and a little bit too much, so we're gonna, we're gonna not worry about that one. But anything that has a, an element in it, any set that has an element of it in it, the null set is a subset. So therefore, any non-empty set contains at least two subsets, the null set and the set itself. And we're going to talk about finding subsets and the number of subsets in the next video, but this was just to kind of introduce us to the idea that the null set does exist and it is a proper subset of every non-empty set. Hopefully you found this informative. Thank you for stopping by.